Hello, Pastor Emily Ruiz here, and I would like to welcome you to our church. Whether this is your first time joining us or you've been part of the family for a long time, it is people like you and me that make up Family Life Church. And being part of our family means that neither time nor distance separates us. You can join us right where you are for this time of worship and encouragement. Please stay with us to the very end to hear all of our online announcements. May God's peace and blessings be upon you today and every day. understand me but the reason I love these guys and ladies and even those that aren't up here this morning but are part of the team and those that serve and those that are serving behind the scenes you know I absolutely love them because they don't just serve and do a task they cry out to God and they serve him through whatever it is that they're doing some of them are musicians and they sing or they worship and you know what they do they they practice hard and they cry out to God to anoint their efforts and to be in the midst of His people 
even when we're outside in a parking lot. And I love that heart. And I'll tell you a secret, God loves that heart. And the people, and you can't see this on the video, but um, some of our, our, our folks out in the parking lot that direct you in on Sunday mornings and are out here way early and wearing masks and vests and all that stuff and directing you in. You know what they do during this time? They watch for cars and they love on people from a distance as best they can and they pray and they worship and they cry out to God and they engage in the service. They're creating an incredible atmosphere for us to all come together and be in worship together because we're welcoming the presence of God. We're telling God, hey God, I may be parking cars, but I'm going to worship you. Hey God, I may be wailing on my guitar, but I'm going to worship you. Hey God, I may be singing, but I'm going to worship you. Hey God, I may be off this week and I'm hanging out in the parking lot by my truck, but I'm going to worship you. And you know what we're communicating to the Lord God Almighty? We're saying, God, you are welcome here. We want you here because it is your presence that sets us apart from everyone else in the earth. And that is what Moses said to God when he was on the mountain. He said, God... Don't send us away from here if you're not going with us. Because he said, because your presence sets us apart from every other nation in the world. And that is still true all these thousands of years later. God's presence in your life, in my life, it sets us apart. It sets us apart. It causes you to, to succeed where you would have otherwise failed. It causes you to have wisdom where you would have not known what to do. It causes you to have a spiritual holy advantage in the earth to fulfill God's purpose and God's will and God's great plan. The miracles that we have been crying out for, the promises that we've been saying, God, would you move? God, would you show up for your people? God, would you have mercy? God, would you heal? God, would you do this? God, would you do that? The purpose of those is for God's purpose, God's great name, and God's glory to be celebrated and known throughout the earth. And people to come to know Jesus because he's moving. I've said it several times this summer and into the fall. I want people to show up to Family Life Church because God is here. I want people to show up here because God has moved mightily. I want people to show up here because God's name is out there. Not my name, not your name, not our band's name, not our lights, not our building, not our bus. You name it. That's not what's popular. What I want people to focus on is Jesus. I want them to show up because he's here. Because he's moving. Because he radically transforms lives. He radically uh, does miracles. And fulfills his great purpose in people's lives. That's why I want people to show up. And so I want to pray for us just now. But I so appreciate our leaders. More than any other reason. Because they cry out to the Lord. And in spite of circumstances. They pray what they prayed in the book of Chronicles. They say, God we don't always know what to do. But our eyes are on you. And that's our leaders, and that's our team, and I love that. And that's our church people, and that's people watching online, and even some people driving by. God, our eyes are on you, and I love that. I love that humble heart before God. God, we, we come before you this morning. It's really not about us, and we talk about that sometimes in church, but this year has shown that it's not about us. God, if you're going to do a miracle, you're going to do it because your great name will be glorified in the earth. God, if you're going to do a miracle, it's for your own purpose that you foresaw before we were even born. If you're going to do a miracle, if you are going to fulfill a promise, it is because of who you are. It is because of what you have done, what you are about to do. It is because your message of the gospel, the good news, saves people eternally. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. You came to save. The Bible says to seek and save those who were lost, that which was lost. I was so lost. But one day I got on my knees next to that little cedar chest in my mom's bedroom and she knelt with me and I cried out and I said, Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need you to save me from my sins and I want to live my life for you. And you showed up in my life from that moment and you have walked with me every step, every step of the way ever since. And I praise your great name. And that is the testimony of so many watching online, so many standing behind me here, so many out in the parking lot serving, so many cleaning the, the interior of the church so that we can safely move around and be here together. But I pray
pray for those that don't know you yet. Today is the day of salvation. In Jesus' name, the Bible says that if we will confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, if we will believe in our heart that God raised Him from the dead, then we will be saved. Saved from sin, set free. And God, I pray that today is the day of salvation for so many. God, if nothing else happens today, may people come to you. If nothing else happens today, may people remember you. If nothing else happens today, would you show up and be glorified, God? People can forget the name of our church. They can forget me. They can forget our team. But they cannot take their eyes off of you. They cannot forget who you are and what you have done. And I pray that that would never happen. That people by the hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands would come to know Jesus this week all around the world. Praise you for the almost 20,000 that were saved in California a couple of weeks back. Thank you, God, for them. Thank you for that ministry. God, thank I've never even been there, but praise the name of the Lord for what you did out there. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord for every church in Glen County this morning that's crying out to Jesus and bringing forth the word. Thank you for them, God. For faithful people showing up and, and hearing the word of the Lord. Thank you, God, for them. Thank you, God, for people around the state of Georgia and around the nation and around the world who have said Jesus is Lord today and I'm going to serve him and I'm going to fulfill my purpose. Thank you, Lord. May our eyes be on you. May we be so humble before you, God. And always for your glory. I pray. Have your way in this place, God. And speak to us clearly. Help us to not just hear you, but respond to you. And I just... Last thing I'm going to pray right now, but I pray an extra measure of grace, an extra special blessing upon people, even those driving by, that you would reach into their road, into their car, and you would touch that heart. They would feel the Spirit of God in their car as they drive down to Blythe Island or back up 303 towards the other places in Glen County. Be mighty everywhere you go, God. Be sovereign everywhere you go, God. Be glorified everywhere you go, God. And we say again, you're welcome here. And we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, if you can, feel free to worship the Lord with us. Clap and shout. You can blow your horns if you like. I know y'all like doing that. Uh, one of these days, I, you know, I never get to sit in the car because I'm up here. I'm going to like pull my car up here and I'm going to blow my horn during that part of the service just for fun. Oh, thank you. <laughs> somebody got me. Well, I appreciate that. that. Somebody got me. That's good. Oh, man, we're going to be in uh, 1 Samuel 23 this morning. And uh, Lord willing, the, uh, the wind won't blow my notes away, but I, uh, I wanted to go. I, I want, there's something about just busting out, you know, a Bible from 20 years back and looking at the promises of God that I've written in the margins and, and the, the miracles that he did back then. And uh, I just, so I've been preaching out of it because I just, I'm expecting God to do miracles again. And I've seen him do miracles. In fact, uh, I, I would tell you about it, but it's not quite time to tell you about it. But there was a miracle this week. Uh, we talked about breakthrough. Uh, there, were, there were a lot of miracles this week, but there was one in particular that um, we talked about breakthrough. And we prayed about breakthrough. And, uh, and one of my sisters uh, reached out to me and there was breakthrough. Come on, somebody. God showed up in her circumstance. And he just showed out and he just showed himself glorious and mighty. And, and listen. I'm telling you, y'all think I'm playing. I'm telling you, end of the year, we're going to be looking back on 2020 and the miracles are going to be so numerous as we talk about them, as we glorify God, as we worship God about them. You're going to forget that we had a pandemic. You're going to be like, did, did something happen this year? Like, God was great. That's all you're going to be able to remember because of the greatness of God at the end of the year. We're going to be looking at that and we're going to be celebrating that together. And I want you to get your expectant heart out for that. How many of y'all with me on that? You do that? Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. All right. Good stuff. I'm in, in faith, 10,000 people online also just said amen. There we go. All right. So I want to tell you a little bit about what we're going to be doing coming up in October because I promised you some details. I promised you some announcements. You guys have been so super patient uh, being in the parking lot for services. And we did that, you know, for one reason. OK, we're in the middle of a pandemic. All right. And um, churches all around the globe had to scramble to decide what to do next. And my prayer all year long has been something like this. God, we've never been this way before, right? And I've prayed that every week of the year, and I've prayed it a thousand times, probably 10,000 times maybe. And so um, I, I'll tell you a little bit. I want to give you the process of the decision-making around here just so you kind of understand. Um, because here's what we do. We pray as a team, all right? There's staff, there's leaders, there's department heads that we pray as a team. 
Okay, and, and there's um, actually when everybody's together, you grab the staff, you grab the department heads, it's, it's close to 30 folks. Um, and, uh, and, and sometimes more than that, depending on different departments and different things. And we get together, and um, we've had to get together on Zoom. We've had to pray over the Internet this year several times, not in person in certain instances, um, just because of the pandemic and the things that have happened. But we pray together, we cry out to God, and we say, God, we don't need good ideas, we need God ideas. All right, because God can see things we can't see. He can foresee things that we can't see. Sometimes when we think we have a good idea, it normally would be a good idea, but God knows something we don't. How many of y'all are parents out there and you understand that concept? Or your grandparents and you understand that concept? You tell your kids to do something, and what do you say to them? It's for your own good, right? And sometimes the kid understands that, and sometimes they don't, right? And God does that with us in so many ways. Okay, sometimes when we go to God in prayer, He signs off on our idea. And sometimes when we go to God in prayer, He directs a different way. And sometimes, honestly, we're scratching our heads going, I don't really get why we're going to do it that way. And sometimes we look around and we go, well, this person's doing it this way. Why can't we just do it this way? And I always feel like God says, did you ask me or not? Like, do you want to know what... (laughs) What's going on or not? And so we always go to God first because we know that He knows things we don't know. So we go to God first. We pray as a team. Um, We've also, all year long, we've considered the health risks and concerns within the community and around the nation. Okay? We've looked at other churches. We've looked at hospitals. We've looked at school systems. We've made phone calls. We've sent text messages. We've sent emails. Um, we've had experts even call us at times. I mean, we've just, we've, we've exhausted the resources on, hey... What do we need to do in this circumstance? This is what we're looking at. This is how many people come to our church. This is the size of the building. On and on and on we go. This is what our county's doing. These are the numbers. And that's what we look at. We look at all those things. Um, As I said, we check with local school systems and guidelines. Now, that wasn't as much of a deal in the summer. But as you know, schools have opened around here. And some kids are going virtual. And some kids are going in person. And everybody's wearing masks. And there's no recess. And on and on and on the list of guidelines goes. For our school system here locally so we look at that um as i said we reach out we we communicate we send messages all of those things and then we make the best decision possible to ensure the safety and the well-being of each one of you okay um it would be easier on this team to throw everybody back in the building and just put masks on and hope for the best that is much easier than some of the things we've done the last several months but was it best we don't believe so and so our goal was to make sure that you and your families were safe and are safe Um, And and so that's what we've done. That's what we continue to do. That's what we will continue to do, not only as we go back into the building at some point and all these other things, but as we do all of the things moving forward. Um, In many ways, we ask some of these questions before the pandemic. We just ask them in different ways. And so here's the next phase of this thing, and I want to kind of show you what we're doing, and it's exciting. It's exciting. It's a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, In early October, we're going to be kicking off Backyard Services. All right, we're getting everybody out of their cars for a much more normal worship experience. Now, some of y'all may be like, well, I've seen that backyard and I ain't coming. All right, but don't worry, because that that backyard ain't going to look like a backyard, but we're finished with it. In fact, if you've peeked around the corner, we've already started work. And so if you've peeked around the corner out back, you know it already looks different back there. But in early October, we're going to kick off backyard services here at FLC, and that's our very next phase of this thing. We're getting people out of the cars. You're not going to have to worry about the radio station necessarily. You're not going to have to worry about, oh, I had to roll my windows up and turn the AC on. All right, because we're, we're, we're doing a lot of climate controlling measures back there as well. Um, we're beautifying the backyard. We're renovating the backyard. We're treating the grass and the grounds with family and child safe um, um, insect controlling elements, all right? So you're not going to be walking through Bug City back there. We're changing up the way we do some of the lawn back there and some of those kinds of things. We're repairing things that need to be repaired, hauling anything away that doesn't need to be back there, opening up spaces and creating things. We're installing massive shade sails back there. Have you ever seen some of those at the marina and some of these different places? We're going to actually be installing a bunch of those huge, massive shade sails back there. We're going to be installing industrial fans. We're all manner of... um, of resources to control the climate for you guys to make sure it's as comfortable as possible out there and creating unique spaces that you and your family can be in in person seated out back there worshiping God together outside of your cars can I get a witness for being outside of the cars amen come on somebody right 
Um, the, the team already jumped into work. So if you peek around the corner today, you'll see some of it already going in. Um, the sanctuary will be open during that space in a very, very limited seating capacity uh, for some of our older FLC family members whose health needs dictate that space, and they will be able to watch the live service on screen. We will still continue Facebook Live, so you'll still have that option if that's something that you really want. But you'll be able to enjoy this, and it's going to be a lot of fun. The weather's already cooling off. Fall is coming, which I, I saw something the other day. People were like, fall means it's 90 degrees instead of 100. But fall is cooling off. It's a nice temperature today, so we're going to be enjoying that. All right, we're going to be building some new stage spaces from what you see here and what you've seen out in the parking lot. We're going to be rocking that. Our FLC worship ministers will be ministering, and different speakers will be sharing from that space. And... We've um, talked to a lot of you and you've said, listen, my kids are in my car and by the time you get done preaching, I'm having to preach to them, right? You know, it like kids don't like just hanging out in the car all that long. I get it. And so we're going to get your kids out of the car too. And we're going to have some child safe social distance activities going on at the same time that will allow your children to engage in some different ways. And come, can all the parents say amen? They're not going to be sitting behind your head rubbing your hair the whole service. Amen? All right. So you're going to be able to do that. And uh, we're going to create those spaces for your children as well. And just some really good things. And everything that we possibly can to make it as comfortable for you as possible as we phase back towards getting back into the sanctuary altogether. And so all of these things are moving forward. And as I said, each, each church is a little different. You know, we pray through these things. We consider the number of people that come to the church. We consider the size of the building. Um, you don't know, but we've already had work done on our HVAC system here around the church to make sure the air is clean, to make sure that we're not pumping, you know, crazy germs in there for you guys. I mean, there's just a lot of behind the scenes things going on and a lot of things happening to make sure that you guys are safe and that your families are safe. And for me, being a parent of four boys, I, I appreciate the, the measures that the team has taken to make sure that we're safe, to make sure that we're well. And so those are some of the things that are coming up. And I want you to just be in prayer, all right? We, as I said, we're not closing the church doors, we're expanding, all right? We're seeing God grow the ministries here. We're seeing God, I've already told you, by the end of this year, you'll see the purple bus, the new to us purple bus that God miraculously delivered in the middle of a pandemic. You're going to see that. I, we Listen, we are praying and we're trusting God and money has come in and by the end of 2020, that thing's going to show up here. I just You, you just have faith for it and trust me. And one day you're going to pull up and you're going to be like, there's that purple bus, what? You're going to be excited, and I'm already excited, but trust me, trust me, you're going to see all of those things this year, and you don't have to doubt. God is good, and He is faithful. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And so those are some of the announcements we've got for you today. We're going to bring more stuff to you. We'll keep pumping out stuff on social media. There will be surprises along the way that you didn't know about. The cool thing about this thing is that we renovate the backyard. We make this amazing space. And then when we're back in the sanctuary and inside the building, that space can be used for children. It can be used for student ministry. We can have backyard movie nights and project the screen out back there. It's going to be an amazing place for prayer. If you want to take a prayer walk and come out on your lunch break and cry out to God or something, there's just so many things that we can do with all of this work that's being put in. And it's nothing wasted. Nothing wasted and nothing missing. And so you guys are going to have a great time with this. It's going to be amazing. And we'll keep rolling out the details to you, keep rolling out the information. And a huge shout out to the different team members. I mean, we've had architecture firms donate designs to us. I mean, like all kinds of stuff has happened for this to come, for this to take place and for us to keep everyone safe and still allow crowds to gather and stuff like that. And so we're just really pumped about that. And I just, I praise God for it. And I want to pray for us as we segue from this into the sermon part of this thing, just so we can get our minds focused. But let's pray together over this. God, I thank you for not just good ideas, but God ideas. Lord, um, Sometimes we make a decision and we're like, why did we have to go that way? Someone else is going this way. And here's what I know. At the end of the day, I trust you. At the end of the day, I trust that we have gotten on our knees and on our faces and we have said as a team, it's not been me by myself. We have said as a team, oh God, how can we best care for your people? How can we best lead this church into your purpose for your glory for your great name how can it be done what do you desire how can people be safe and be blessed and be favored of God how can they fulfill the purpose of God in their lives we've prayed these things on our knees on our faces 
in unity and you have answered a thousand times over. And so God, we trust you as we go forward. Just like the Israelites, they went forward. They didn't even know where they were going half the time. But you were leading them. And God, we trust you to lead us. And we trust you that by December 31st, 2020, God Almighty, we're going to be looking back on this year. And because the miracles are so numerous, we will forget that the pandemic happened. I'm not saying that it just goes away. I'm just saying that our eyes will be so fixated on the miracles of God that the pandemic will be in the back of our heads it'll be an afterthought and you will be the focus of our attention in all of our hearts i pray that you would encourage people today i pray that people would have an excitement i pray that people would have faith i pray that people would know that you are for them not against them i pray oh god that you would lift up every person who is suffering depression who is struggling with life who is struggling with hope in jesus name have your way lift them up and do what only you can do for your purpose and your great name and for your glory in Jesus' name, speak to us during this word. Amen. 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 And we'll continue again, pumping out details to you guys. If you missed any part of the announcement, come see me and I'll tell you about it. Or you can call up at the church office if something needs to be clarified. And again, watch online. We will continue to pump out announcements to you. Pictures of what's going on. All kinds of good stuff. And if you want to be involved, you say, hey, I, I want to be a part of that. Um, make sure you get with the team and we'll plug you in there too. So, great stuff coming up and all God's people said amen. amen amen so first Samuel chapter 23 I want to dig into this with you guys this morning first Samuel chapter 23 first Samuel chapter 23 we're talking about King David today um, I was up early praying again I get I got I cannot I cannot emphasize overemphasize emphasize enough the <laughs> The peace that I get from sitting quietly in the dark of the house with a cup of coffee in my hand, just thinking about the Lord and considering His greatness and considering what He's done and looking at His Word and remembering His promises. Sometimes I open up notes and I look back to the miracles He's done. He's done miracles my whole life. And you say, well, well you're a pastor. He's done them for you because you're a pastor. No, <laughs> he, He's done them for all of us, but I'm looking for them. He's, he's done them for each of us. If you've asked Him to, He showed up for you. If you have cried out to Him, He has been there. And i gotta, I got to tell you a little secret. Sometimes He's been there for you when you didn't even ask. Sometimes He has saved your life and you didn't know He was saving your life. Okay? He, I can tell you stories where He literally saved my life, where I should not be here standing here today. But God showed up on my behalf. He showed up one time when I was completely unconscious and I couldn't even pray for myself, but someone else did. And He saved my life that day. So many times God has shown up, and so now I've learned to look for His miracles. I'm watching for them. I'm expecting them. And then when I see them, I say, thank you, God. I see what you did there. Thank you, God. I hear you. That's amazing. And it could be the smallest thing to you, to your eyes, but God moved mightily on your behalf. And I, and I want to challenge you. Take the rest of the day today and recognize the miracles of God. They're good. They're good, and they encourage you when you see them. So please, take a moment today to do that. 1 Samuel chapter 23. Um, I actually won't be long today. I'll do my very best. Y'all stay on me. I'll do my best. I promise. 1 Samuel 23. We're going to the first five verses first, and we'll go from there. 1 Samuel 23, verses 1 through 5. It says, When David was told, Look, the Philistines, or the enemy of the people of God, the Philistines are fighting against Keilah, and they are looting the threshing floors, okay, so they're stealing, all right? They're looting um, the threshing floors, and he inquired of the Lord. He, David, inquired of the Lord, and he said, shall I go and attack the Philistines? Shall I go and attack the enemies of God's people? The Lord answered him, and he said, go and attack the Philistines. And I love one translation said, and save the people. Save the people. Save the people of Keilah. And so David was going to go do that, and David's men, he had about 600 men at the time. He was not king yet. He was running from Saul. He was living in the wilderness. He was not king. God had not made him king just yet. And his men said to him, but um, here in Judah, we are afraid. How much more then if we go to Keilah against the Philistine forces? So they were already afraid where they are. Maybe you're standing there this morning, sitting there this morning, and you're saying, God, I'm already scared right where I am. And you're asking me to move in faith? 
to something bigger. I'm already afraid of what's going on around me now. You're asking me to step into something else? And that's what was going on here. And David said, God, shall we go? God said, yes. The men said, whoa, we're already afraid. We're going to be terrified if we go there. And so David goes back to the Lord. By the way, a uh, little spoiler alert, that's where you're supposed to go when you're terrified. That's where you're supposed to go when you're anxious. That's where you're supposed to go when you find out that you have a pandemic in your year. That's where you're supposed to go. Back to God. So David goes back to God. He inquires of the Lord and the Lord answered him. I love that. Did you know that if you go back to the Lord, the Lord will answer you? Did you know if you just ask him? You have not because you ask not. You said, well, God didn't speak to me. Well, did you talk to him? Did you make time? You have not because you ask not. Ask him. Try it. Try it today. Ask him for the simplest thing. Ask him. He will show up in your life. And so David goes back to the Lord. The Lord answered him. The Lord, I love this. This is fun. The Lord said, go down to K Allah, for I am going to give the Philistines into your hand. So God didn't look and say, well, that army is too big for you. It is scary down there. You know what? I didn't think about that. Why don't y'all just, just forget the whole thing? God didn't say that. God clarified his directive. Not only am I sending you down, but by the way, I'm just going to hand the enemy over to you. I'm just going to hand you a victory with 600 guys. I'm just going to hand you the victory against an enemy that's bigger than you. I'm just going to hand you the victory. Come on, somebody want to receive that for 2020. Amen. God just handed them the victory. They went, they inquired of the Lord, and they went, and God handed them the victory. So David and his men, I love that leadership. David listens to his men. They're afraid. He goes back to God. But once he goes to God again, he comes back and says, this is what God says, let's roll. And the men followed him. I love that whole dynamic. They were just willing to trust the Lord. And so David and his men went to Ke'elah, and they fought the Philistines, and they even took the Philistine stuff. Not only did they win the victory, but they gained an abundance in the middle of the victory. I love that. God said, hey, here is your victory, and by the way, I'm just going to bless your life on top of that. How about that? Let's do that. And that's what God's going to say to you. You've been terrified about this year, but God is going to show up and hand you victory. And then he's going to say, by the way, here's some extra blessing on top of the victory. How about that? Amen. That's what I want. I'm going to take hold of that in Jesus' name. And then, he, and, and then the God, God inflicted, there's that wind I was talking about. God inflicted heavy losses on the Philistines and he saved the people. How many of y'all crying out this morning, God save me from circumstance. Save me me rescue me show up for me god saved the people god saved the people skipping down to verse 7 and then saul was told that david had now saul remember saul's the king but david's going to be the king god has abandoned saul but he's with david you understand but david's still on the run very uncomfortable situation for him. Saul is told that David has gone to Keilah and he said, God has handed him over to me. For David has imprisoned himself by entering a town with gates and bars. So Saul mistakenly assumes that God is with him. But God is with David. Saul thinks that God is fighting for him. But God has abandoned Saul. The Bible teaches that. In fact, the Bible even says that God became Saul's enemy because Saul showed contempt for the things of the Lord. He refused to obey the Lord. And so God left him and anointed David to be the next king. And so God was with David, but Saul thought God was on his side. And he, and he says, I'm going to go down and I'm going to capture him. Verse 10, David inquires of the Lord again. He says... Um, o Lord, God of Israel, your servant has heard definitely that Saul plans to come to Keilah and destroy the town on account of me. And then David says, are the citizens going to surrender me to him? Will Saul come down as your servant has heard? So, so David goes to God with this problem again. Now I want you to understand, David is in Keilah because God told him to go save the people. I mean, isn't that a little bit not the way we think things should go? David is only in Keilah because God said, go save those people. David gets down there to save the people that God told him to save, and he looks around and another army is going to come kill him. Anybody ever feel like that? You're like, man, I followed God and my situation's worse than it was when I started. Listen, God was about to get glory all over again. 
God already had a plan before he sent David to Keilah. God already knew that David was going to face two enemies. God already knew that the circumstance was going to go from bad to worse before it got better. And God already had a rescue plan. Some of you are sitting there and you're like, 2020 has been a mess and my mess just got messier. And Pastor Josh, you've been preaching faith all summer long, but now my mess is messier. What's up with God? Sometimes your mess gets messier, but God still had a plan for that mess too. And God still had a plan to rescue the whole time. God knew that your mess was going to get messier and might even get messier. And dare I say, oh my goodness, it might even get messier. But hear me, people. God has a plan for your rescue and he had it the whole time. Not a single mess from your life surprised God Almighty. Not a single rest and a single mess took him by surprise, shocked him, made him second guess his game plan. God said, I knew this was coming 20 years ago. I knew this was coming 200 years ago. 2,000 years ago, I knew what was going to happen in 2020. And I always had a plan. I was always ready to rescue you. I was always ready for you to cry out to me and for me to show you my mightiness and for me to show you my miracle. God is always ready with your rescue in the midst of your mess. He's ready. Have you asked him for it? Have you asked him for it? I love it. David inquired of the Lord. The men were afraid. David goes back to the Lord. Then he obeys the Lord. And then there's another mess. And what does David do? He goes back to the Lord. He goes back to the Lord. He cries out to God. And God says, basically, yeah, Saul's coming. And yeah, the people of the town that you just saved, yeah, they're going to turn you over to him. Yeah, it's bad. I mean, like, nobody wants those answers from God. Nobody wants that. Okay, God basically tells David, your situation is about to get worse before it gets any better. But God, I just picture him, I mean it's not in the scripture, but I just picture God almost whispering to David, hey, I've got your plan of rescue. I've got you. I've got you. Hey, fam, he's got you. He's got your plan of rescue. He's got you. He's got your miracle. He's got your promise. He's got you. He didn't miss what happened to you. He didn't miss the pain that you're in. He didn't miss the grief that you're bearing. He didn't miss the loss that you suffered. He didn't miss a detail of your life. He's not missing a detail today. Some of you are sitting here listening right now and you are broken hearted because of what's going on in your circumstance and you're trying to be here and you're trying to be online but you are absolutely devastated by something that's happened to you and I am not diminishing your pain and I am not saying that it doesn't matter. It does matter. And, and my practice is this, I mourn with those who, me, who mourn and I rejoice with those who rejoice. And so if you've got good news, I want to shout and celebrate with you. And if your heart is broken, I want to weep with you. Because that's what scripture tells me to do. And so that's what I want and that's what I try to do. And so I'm not minimizing anything that you've walked through. I am just reminding you that in the midst of your broken heart, in the midst of the pain and agony that you are suffering, God still has your rescue in mind. And before you went through the pain and the agony, He saw you. He knew you would hurt. He knew that you would shed tears. He knew that you would hide in the back room of your house. And no one would know that you were weeping and that you were in agony. He knew that, but He also promised He'd be there for you. He promised He'd walk with you. And He promised that He would have something in mind for you. Don't have to be afraid. So David finds out that the people he just saved are going to turn him over to the other enemy that's just coming. I mean, he just saved these people. He just risked the lives of him and his men. And now these people are going to turn him over to the enemy because the enemy coming to them is greater than the last enemy they faced. And so the people of the town don't know what to do. They're going to turn him over. They're going to abandon him to Saul. And Saul's planning on killing David. That's the plan. It went from bad to worse just like that. Even after David did something good for the Lord. It went from bad to worse just like that. But skipping down, skipping down, um, David asked, will the citizens surrender me and my men? Verse 12, and, and the Lord said simply, they will. Now look at this. God didn't give David another plan right there. Do you see that? All he, all he did was answer his questions. He didn't even give him a, a second plan. He didn't say, yeah, you should take this road and you should go this way and go that way and you'll be okay. He just tells him, yeah, these guys are going to turn you over and, and you're out of luck. <laughs> no, I mean, he didn't say out of luck. God wouldn't say that. But he says, yeah. He says, these people are going to abandon you and they're going to turn you over to Saul. And so David and his men, after inquiring of the Lord numerous times, do you see that? David and his men acted on what God had given them. Sometimes you have to act on what God has given you. 
and trust God to lead you the right way. Okay, God doesn't always spell out every single detail of the path that you are on, the journey that you are on. He certainly didn't do it for me in ministry. I trusted God when I said, God, I will, I will answer the call to full-time ministry. And then I trusted God. Did you know when I moved to Brunswick in 05? It was uh, 15 years ago, September 13th, I, uh, last Sunday. I moved to Brunswick in 2005 against the advice of a couple of leaders that I really valued. They were spiritual leaders in my life. And I, I didn't rebel. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not suggesting that you rebel against spiritual leadership. But a couple of people that I held in high regard that prayed for me and that were a part of my life, I talked to them and I said, hey, I really feel like God is calling me to move to Brunswick and to do this thing. And they were like, oh, that's kind of a terrible idea. That's kind of, you know, I mean, like really shot it down and kind of crushed my little tiny heart. <laughs> you know? and I was like, well, maybe I'm not supposed to go, you know. And, but I did what David did. I went back to prayer. I went back to prayer. And I talked to some other godly people in my life, some other people who really knew me best. I went and I talked to them. And, and these were people of prayer. And I went and I talked to them. I said, this is kind of the feedback I got. Am I just missing God here? And the people that knew me best, that had my best in mind, that knew my heart for God, said, no, I don't think you're missing it. I think you're, I think you're right on target with what you're about to do. And I took it back to prayer again, and I turned in my two-week notice at my job at the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, and I moved to Brunswick, Georgia, right here. And for a long time, I was a youth pastor here, and then many other things since that time. But the path was not all that clear in that moment for me. I didn't have a, a great understanding. I just kind of knew the next couple of steps. I just kind of knew that little part there. And I wasn't sure about the rest. I didn't know how it would all turn out. I never had what I'm doing now in mind for sure. I, I mean, like, none of that did I have in my mind. I just kind of knew that God had called me to this area. I didn't even know where Brunswick was. I, they were like, Brunswick. And I'm like, I don't know where that is. They're like, well, it's kind of near Jacksonville. I was like, well, I've heard of Jacksonville. I, you know, I had no idea where you people were. But I'm so glad I'm here. Amen. I'm so glad that God has done the miracles I've seen the last 15 years. I'm so glad to be here with you. I'm so glad to follow God. Why? Because He has better than I do my best in mind. He has better than I do. Now, it may be through pain. It may be through agony. It may be through trauma. It may be through things that I don't ever want to walk through. But He will not abandon me. He will be with me. He will not abandon you. He will be with you. David was hiding and he was supposed to be king. He was hiding and he was being hunted and he was supposed to be king. Anointed by God to be king. But he was hiding and he was hunted. And then after he saved the town, he was set aside and was going to be betrayed. And then he had to run all over again. But instead of... But he takes what God told him and he responds to it. Right? I'm going to go ahead and invite the band back if you guys will come for me, please. David takes what God told him and he responds to it. He gets his men to safety. And he waits. Waits for the next opportunity to save people. Waits for the next opportunity to hear from God. Waits for the next opportunity to do the things that God had set him up to do. Not knowing when he would be anointed king. Not knowing when these things would happen in his life. Not knowing. Not knowing, not knowing. You know, in many ways what we've done here is a lot like these men. We've inquired of God over and over. We've written out the best plans we can write. We've tried to understand the best things that we can. And that's why we're pursuing this backyard services thing. God didn't lay it all out for us, but He gave us direction. He gave us godly wisdom. He gave us people to speak into our lives. He allowed us to hear from community leaders and nation leaders. And, and based on that, we did what David did. We responded. We followed the Lord as best we could. And we're trying to serve people. Trying to save people. That's what David did that day. He took the word of the Lord that God gave him and he responded to it and he went and saved his men. He didn't know exactly where to go, exactly what to do, but he knew an enemy was coming that he didn't need to face at that time. And so he took his men to safety. He took his men to safety. That's what we're doing. We know some things. We don't know all. 
And so we're stepping into this next phase of in-person services to worship the Lord together, to trust and believe God for the purple bus to come through, to trust and believe God that there are more souls in Glen County and in our nation and around the world to be reached. There are FLC Global Partnerships that haven't even been thought of yet by us, but we are supposed to work in missions and serve in people around the world and around the globe. Uh, if you don't know, we've built churches before. We've built orphanages before. We've done these things overseas before. We're not finished. I don't know what the future of missions at FLC looks like, but we're not finished. Right. There are other people to be reached. As long as there's one person who does not know Jesus Christ, we have something to do. As long as there is one person who has yet to fulfill the purpose of God in their lives, we have something to do. Right. And so here we are. Here we are. Backyard services is the next part of that. And then in-person services in the sanctuary, I'm sure, will be the next part of that. And then, and then, and then, and then. As long as God moves mightily and as long as God directs His people, we're going to follow Him. Just like Moses said, hey, God, if you're not going with us, don't send us anywhere. Because your presence in our lives sets us apart from everybody else. Everybody else. I want to give you just a few more things as we're closing up and getting into the altar right here. And I'm going to pray and we're going to go. It's 12.07. I won't keep you long. 12.07. I uh, told you how I like to spend my mornings on Sundays. It's real early and it's dark at my house. and You know, i got four boys. One of them turns a year old here in just a few days. And so, yeah. Yeah, that one, by the way, wasn't supposed to be alive right now. And I don't say that in a callous way. I just say that in a look at God kind of way. And so, he wasn't supposed to be alive right now, but he's about to turn one. Come on, somebody. So, I mean, I just, you know, I excuse me for shouting and bragging on God just a little bit. Because God did that in answer to prayers and in answer to many of the prayers that, that are in this parking lot, by the way. Some of y'all cried and wept and shouted to God for that little baby. And so we named him Silas Daniel. Silas, because Silas was the one with Paul worshiping in the dungeon. And God shook the walls in response to worship and set them free. And salvation came to that place. And then Daniel, because there was a word given, uh, Sister Victoria came up to me one day and she said, I've been praying for you and I feel like this is for you. And she reminded me of the passage of Scripture in Daniel where um, the king goes to check on Daniel. In the lion's den, right? You know, typically you don't survive the lion's den. And the king goes to check on Daniel the next morning and he says, Daniel was the God whom you serve continually able to save you. And Daniel responds and says, O king, live forever. The Lord sent his angel to shut the mouths of the lions. I have not been harmed. And the Bible says that when they lifted Daniel up out of the pit, there was not a scratch on him. And I heard that word, and I took that word, and I grabbed it, and I said, God, I am holding this. My baby was in the hospital, and I didn't know what was going to happen, but I was holding that thing, and I said, God, he was out of town, by the way. It wasn't even like here. I was having to back and forth. It was a long story. But I'm holding that word, and I said, God, my kid is coming out of the pit, and he's not just coming out. There won't be a scratch on him. That's what I'm believing for because we are serving you continually, God, and we're not going to stop serving you just because this thing doesn't look right and just because it's not what we wanted and just because it's not what we were hoping for. It, it doesn't matter. You're still God. You're still mighty, and I'm believing you for this thing. And so that little miracle is about to turn one in just a few days, and I'm just bragging on Jesus because that's what I do. I'm just bragging on Jesus because He's mighty. I'm just talking about the Lord because He's good, because He's faithful, and He's faithful in your circumstance. But God showed me something in my little early morning coffee time this morning, and I want to show it to you because I got excited. I, in fact, I about shouted in my house, and I had to remember that like it's, it's one story and we all close, and I had to hush. But I got excited, and I would have shouted if I had been outside. But here's what He said. I was sitting there and I was looking at God's promises and God's miracles. And I was thinking about God's promises and God's miracles. And I said to myself, because I've written this many times this year, I said, and you can write this down if you're taking notes because I thought it was good. It's from Jesus. So um, it said, I'm not looking at how God will do the promises and miracles I'm praying for. I'm just looking at He will. Now hold on, it gets better. I'm not looking at how. I've said that earlier this year. I'm not looking at how. Sometimes we get lost in the details, right? We're looking at how God is going to show up, how God is going to do this. How is he going to make this promise work? I don't see how. I don't see how. I don't see how. I don't see how. 
Well, He's God. You're never going to see all the how. He's God. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are higher. His thoughts are higher. He's mightier. He knows more. He understands more. So of course you're not going to see how all the time. But you need to see that He will. You need to see that He will. There's a passage in Matthew, I think, and I put it on my Facebook stories this morning. You can go grab it after service. Um, it, it, the two blind men come to Jesus, and Jesus says, Do you believe that I am able? That I am able. Do you believe that I can do this for you? That I am able to do this miracle you're asking me for? Because they wanted to see. The blind men wanted to see. And they said, Yes, Lord. So sometimes we're not sitting here going, God, I don't know how, I don't know how, I don't know how. We're saying, God, you will. You will. You're able. I trust you. You will. You will. You will. The bus isn't here yet, but it will be. It will be. Bus isn't in the parking lot yet, but it will be. It's on the way. I don't have the date, but it's on the way. It's on the way. It's on the way. It's on the way. Right? You're going to say it till it gets here, and then at Christmas you're going to be like, hey, that bus showed up. I'm going to be like, I know. I know. It's on the way. Your miracle, your promise. Don't be so consumed with how, but be consumed with He will. Not how, but He will. He is able. He is able. Right now, listen to this. This is what God showed me this morning. I, I'd never seen this before. Maybe you're a scholar and you got all this, but I didn't see it till this morning. Right now, it is the how. The how God's going to do it that makes my mind redirect. Right now, it's the how that makes my mind redirect. It is the how that can bring anxiety because I cannot see how yet. It's the how that brings anxiety into my life when I can't see how God will do it and the how consumes my thoughts. Instead of focusing on He's about to do it, He will do it, He's able to do it, I'm thinking, how's He going to do it? How's He going to do it? How's He going to do it? Oh, He can't do it. He can't do it. He can't do it. You see how that goes? The how makes my mind redirect to place it should not be. Especially in the midst of a pandemic, especially in the emotional drain that's on our society right now, the how makes me redirect to a place that lacks faith. And I don't want to be in a place that lacks faith. I want to be in a place where I know God's about to show up. And so the how can bring anxiety because I don't yet know how. Only, oh I love this stuff, but only that He will. Only that He is able. I cannot see how the miracle will come to pass. So instead, I look to Him, I look to Him that He is able, that He will show up, that He will come through. Do I believe that you are able, Lord? Yes, I believe that you are able. Do you see the statement of faith? I don't know how, but you're God. I don't need to know how. I just need to know that you're able. I just need to understand that you will. I need to trust you when what I can't fully see yet hasn't come to pass yet. I need to trust you, not in the how, but you're able, you will. Check this out. This, I about danced up out of the house. I hope you do too. But this, I was just like, my goodness. And the men, they said, yes, Lord. And the blindness thing, they said, yes, Lord. That's, that's humility. Yes, Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. I love that part. But here, here, right here. This I saw this morning. After the miracle comes to pass, it will be how He did it that adds to my awe and amazement for who God is and what He has done. The thing, God Almighty, the thing that brought you anxiety before, the thing that tried to pull you into faithlessness before, the thing that tried to get you into fear before, will be the thing that brings awe and amazement and wonder after. Because after the miracle shows up, after the promise shows up, you will know how. And you will be amazed at how God did it. Because He will have done it in a way that you didn't see coming. He will have done it in a way that you didn't have in your mind. Why? Because it's God's mind. It's God's thoughts. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So the thing that brought you anxiety before will bring you wonder and awe and amazement after you will tell people all over the world even how God came through for you. Before, how God came through for you terrified you because you didn't know. The uncertainty of not knowing. The anxiety comes from that. The fear that comes from that. The lack of faith that comes from that. 
people excited. The thing that brought anxiety before the miracle, before the promise, now causes wonder as you marvel at what He has done and how He did it. He could have led Israel to a stream of water in the wilderness that He had cared for for years, that He had prepared and purified the water for them so that at just the right moment, they could go drink. What's He do instead? Hey, Moses, take that staff and go hit that rock. That's how He did the miracle. But I would have never thought of that. I would have been like, God, could you give us some water, please? We need a stream to drink from and the water doesn't need to kill all of us. And I would have been like, just direct me to the water. That would have made sense in my mind. That was the how that I would have suggested. What does God do? Hey, Moses goes hit the rock with a stick and water gushes out and the people drink. God had a different idea of how He was going to do it, but He was always able. And He was always willing to do it. He was always able and He was always willing to do it. After the miracle, the how brings glory to God. I want you to think about it. You might have to write it down and pray about it to really grab this. After the miracle, how God did it brings glory and honor to God. When my wife and I were going through the thing with my son, Silas, Silas Daniel, and by the way, the last part of the naming thing, we named him that so that for the rest of his life, everywhere he goes, he can tell the story of God's greatness with his name. He can say, oh, my parents named me this because I wasn't supposed to be here, but God showed up. And so for the rest of his life, his whole name is going to be a testimony to God's greatness. And I love that. And that makes me want to shout too. So little guy, born 10 weeks early, so many of you know the story. Whole time we're praying. Whole time crying out to God. Get hospitalized here locally. Keep us over the weekend. Doc says, nope, you're going to the high-risk pregnancy unit in Savannah. They've got a special unit there if they have a bed open. By the way, that was a miracle. They didn't have a bed open either. And God moved and we got one bed. And they didn't even have space for us. And God moved and did another miracle in somebody else's life so we could get that bed. I forgot about that. Another miracle. All along the way. Miracle, miracle, miracle. We go there. There a long time. He was in there 51 days. But before, before Allison had the baby, there were a lot of complications that could have taken her life. Now, we didn't really talk about it a ton then because that was a lot emotionally to process. So we didn't really talk about it a ton then. I'll talk to you about it now all you want. But there were things that, that should have taken her life then. And we prayed. And I'm going to take a couple more minutes to tell you this. I'm sorry. If you got to go, go. I love you. Peace out. But I'm going to tell you this anyway. And if you need a miracle story, this is it. So several things could have taken her life. And we kept praying. Not knowing, but praying. I was here three boys in school I'd get them to school I'd scramble back to Savannah be with them all day try to figure out ministry stuff as I could get back here for the night get back up drop the boys to school get back some of y'all scrambled to help me pick up kids some of y'all scrambled to help me do all kinds of things some of y'all brought food I can't even I can't even name the miracles that y'all were to us during that space she's hospitalized a number of problems could have taken her life back then. A number of problems could have taken the baby's life. Finally, the, the blood flow reverses in the umbilical cord to the detriment of the baby. And Doc says, it's time. we got to do this thing. And he gives me a call and I'm, I'm, I've just dropped the boys at school. About to head up to Savannah again. Get a call and, hey, baby's coming in three hours. They said, if you can get here in three hours, you'll be there. But if not, you're going to miss it. And so I head that way. And I'm, I'm praying. I'm praying and I, I take... A, I text just a few of y'all that I that I could think of to text. I, I don't know if you know what kind of emotional state you're in in that moment, but I was I was driving and I was trying to like 
at least keep it on the side of 95 I was supposed to be on, you know what I mean? Like, I just wasn't really there. I was crying, and, you know, and I, I don't know if I voice texted or what I did. I don't even know if it made any sense, but, but I managed to text the passage from Daniel to a few of you that I knew would pray. And I, I didn't even have time to text y'all. I, like, I texted the, the few people I could, like, in that moment, process to think of to pray. I texted out and voice texted out, I guess, and said, this is what I'm standing on. This is the Word of God I'm standing on. This is what I'm believing God for. That He will be lifted up out of this pit that looks so dark and so dangerous and God Almighty, He won't have a scratch on Him. He will not have a scratch on Him. That's what I said. And I said, God, I'm standing on this, Your Word. That's what I said. And I texted a few of y'all and I said, share this with the leaders. Y'all pray this with me. This is what I'm praying. And I get there and never prayed so much in my life. And I, man, I was running on like no sleep. I had like a couple hours of sleep a night because in the midst of dealing with the boys, I'd wake up and I'd know I have to pray, you know, like at three in the morning, two in the morning. Like I was not sleeping at all, really. And sometimes Allison would text me in the middle of the night and I'd be, my phone would ding and, I, and I'd have to pray and I'd have to send her scriptures to tell her it was going to be all right. And that God was with her and like, you know, I'll get the boys to school and I'll be back in the morning. And like, this was my life during that time. And I had to just deal. Y'all stood with me and were, were for me. But, and and I, I can't even tell you how grateful I am. But just kind of had to deal and walk through that thing. But then the baby came. And against all odds, the baby lived. And against all odds, Mama lived. And against all odds, he stayed for about 51 days after that in this intensive care. And we had ups and downs and we had tubes. And, and uh, Allison's been sharing on Facebook all month long about some of the NICU stuff. And so if you want to see it, you can hit her Facebook page. It's, it's pretty wild. It's got a lot of pictures from back then. The size of the baby and everything. Um, this ring right here, it fits on my left hand. It's a 12. It fit over his fist and onto his wrist back then. Um, that ring right there. It wasn't this one. It was a different one, but I have that one still. It fit right over his fist and onto his wrist. That's how small he was when he was born. And uh, he showed up. He lived. She lived. 51 days up there. Ups and downs. But God moved. And I'll never forget bringing him home out of that hospital. It was like such a victory moment because it was this culmination of this miracle that had no business ever happening but God. She should have died. He should have died. Medically, they shouldn't be here. But God. But God. But God. But God. Now he didn't do that miracle the way that I had planned. And listen, sometimes we suffer loss. I know that too. It could have gone another way. But I knew that he was able. It could have gone differently and I understand that, but I knew he was able. And I stood on everything I knew to stand on to believe him for the impossible. Now, he didn't do it the way I wanted. I wanted him to heal them in Brunswick, and we go home and have the baby. I didn't want to walk through that. I didn't want to do it that way. But God had a miracle story, a miracle story to tell like only he can tell one. I've told you 10 minutes worth of what happened. There's several hours worth of what happened. Several hours worth of miracles that I could recount one after the other about what God did. Big things, little things, miraculous things, all of them. Over and over and over and over. And I wept and I cried and I wondered and I thought, God, what if? 
And I, I had to pray this. I had to pray, He will keep in perfect peace the one whose mind has stayed on Him. He will keep in perfect peace the one whose mind has stayed on Him. He will keep in perfect peace. I would lay in my bed at 2 in the morning and I would stare at the ceiling and I would try to text her a verse to encourage her so that she knew that somebody was in her corner. And I would try to stand there and be there for her even though I was an hour away and I was with the other boys. And I would text her a verse and I would say, You will keep in perfect peace. Him whose mind is fixed on you, you will keep in perfect peace. Him whose mind. And over and over I would stand on the promises of God's word. And I would say, God, you're coming to move mightily in this circumstance. You're coming to move mightily in this situation. God, you're going to lift my son up out of the darkness that he's in. And when he comes out, he's not going to have a scratch on him. And by the way, he's huge right now. He ain't 2 pounds, 13.9 ounces. Go look at his pictures. And little dude, I don't know if he does like push-ups at night or what. He's, he's big. He like was patting me and about knocking me out the other day. Like, you know, we try to work on that. A little miracle. Every day I go around the corner and I look at a miracle. Look at a miracle. And I know it doesn't always go that way. But it did this time for God's glory. I understand that not every circumstance goes that way. But it did this time for God's glory. And when things are dark, I still praise Him. And when things are happy, I still praise Him. And when things are terrible, I praise Him. And when things are about to turn around, I praise Him. And I just know, because I've walked in the darkness with Him before, that there's a light coming. And I know that I've walked when it seemed like there was no hope before, and hope came. And so because I know that, because I've walked through that, I continue to trust Him when I can't see. I continue to believe Him when I cannot see. That's why David responded to God in obedience. He had trusted God before and God had never let him down. You can trust God today and He will not let you down. You can trust God today. You can stand on the promises of His Word and He will not let you down. I've been crying out to God for breakthrough for some of our staff members and some of our families in the church and different people that have different miracles they need. Some of them have already gotten them in the last few weeks. Some of them don't have them yet. Guess what I'm doing? I'm still praying. I'm still crying out to God. I'm still believing for breakthrough. I'm still believing for miracles. Sometimes I weep and sometimes I feel it, but I'm still believing for miracles. I'm still looking for them. Your circumstance, your situation, there's hope. And you can believe God for His miracles. You don't see how right now. Because that's God's business. Just understand that He is able. That's your business. Understand that He can. Understand that He will show up for you. He promises to show up for you. I'm not telling you that God's a genie in a bottle and you rub the lamp and you get everything you ever asked for. That's not what I'm saying. He's God. He's sovereign. There are things I don't understand about the greatness and sovereignty of God. And I'm learning every day. But you focus in on, He will come through for me. He is able to do this thing. Yes, Lord, I believe you're able. Yes, Lord, I believe you're able. Yes, Lord, I believe you're able. Let Him worry about how. Because He may just lead you to a stream in the desert. Or He may tell you to smack a rock. He may heal your baby in Brunswick at the hospital and you go to the house. He might make you walk through 51 days in the NICU not knowing what's going to happen and cry out to Him that way. He's God and I'm not. But He gets the glory. He gets the praise. He gets the honor out of every circumstance. And He is able. He was able for David and David's men. He even saved that town of Keilah. He's able to save them in their distress. He was able to hide David from Saul. He was able to show up in any number of miracles throughout the, throughout the Old and New Testament. And He is able in 2020 to show up for you. He is able to do... You know what I'm believing for now? We got backyard services coming up. I'm believing for backyard miracles. Backyard, hey, I don't know about you. I ain't never seen no backyard miracle before. Because I ain't never had service in a backyard before. But we about to... So I'm about to see some backyard miracles during the backyard services. And I've never seen that before. I'm excited. I'm excited. I didn't ask God 
all the details about the how. I trusted him that he's able and that he will. And I want you to do that this morning. Because the thing right now, and this is it, I'm done. We'll worship and we'll go. The thing that you are staring at right now, the how, how's it going to happen, God? That thing will rob you of faith. It'll replace faith with fear. It'll cause you tremendous anxiety and mental distress if you consume yourself with how God's going to do it right now. So focus on He's able and He will. And then, on the other side of your miracle, on the other side of your promise, you can look at how He did it. And you can be amazed. You can look at how God did it. And you can be astonished. You can look at how God did it and you can get on your knees and you can say, worthy is the Lord who was able. I believe He was able. I believe He could do it. I believe He would. Now, seeing how He did it amazes me, astonishes me. I'm in awe. I wouldn't trade the story of my son's miracle, of Allison's miracle for anything in the world. Why? Because it brings such great glory to God. Because for all of my efforts, I could not save them. For all of the efforts of the doctors, they could not save them. But God. And I got a front row seat to God showing up mightily. I would never trade that for anything in the world. What an amazing God we serve. You say, well, I've read about His miracles. How about you have one? I've read about His miracles, but how about you have one? Because that's what we believe around here. That God is God of all circumstance. God, in Jesus' name, I come before you right now. I told Him I wouldn't go long, but I went long. I apologize, Lord, but I tell you what. Thank you for showing off mightily in the life of my family last year and doing a miracle that I had never seen before. Thank you that when doctors weren't sure and nurses weren't sure and technicians weren't sure, you were sure. They did all they could and I love those guys and ladies. They, they gave so much to my family last year and I, I honor them. Those medical professionals, they did so much, God. I'm so grateful to each one of them. Maybe some of them will see this someday and know what a great impact they had. But God, I know that you did the miracle. I know that when death was spoken, you spoke life. I know that when there was no way, you made a way. And I know that when I could not see how, because I was weeping and I had tears and I had no sleep and I couldn't even handle the circumstance very well emotionally and I felt like I was a wreck, even when I felt that way, you saw clearly and you handled all the details of how. I just had to know that you were able. I just had to know that you would. And I pray today for peace for people this morning. God, that you would allow us to set aside the how right now and focus on your able and you will. Push aside the how and focus on your able and you will. Because you are able to do all things and you will show up for your people. Because you said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will be fine. You find and knock and the door will be open. So we trust you this morning, God. We trust you this morning. With every detail, the thing that would cause us anxiety now will cause us to be in awe of you when the promise gets here. And we just bless your name, Lord. Please take this word, speak to each one of us, help us to worship you with our lives, cause us to get ready for the backyard miracles coming soon. In Jesus' name, amen.